it's Black Avenue Music, that's D Black holding us down on that jam, yeah G, yeah, nee. listen, we're talking with Sheldon a couple of days ago, we're saying that we love that intro, this song is a classic by all standards, brings the life into the party anytime you are at, you know, at an event, a place, a joint, when they drop this jam, you will definitely love it, but this song is a business song, I tell you what, because I don't think he just went into the studio and was like, you know what, let me just do, no, 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 there's mm -hmm. always business behind it, and if you know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the man D Black. Live in the studio with us this morning, welcome to Culture Daily's Part 2 Conversation. Big convo right here in Studio 899. The man is here, Big Boss D Black, live in the studio. Yo! Thank you so much. Yeah, 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 Thank you. Yeah. Shout out to my daddy, Cyril. Oh, oh, daddy. Okay. Oh, daddy. Cyril was slow with that. I was being compassionate. I was thinking, should I leave him alone? Should I leave him alone? No, 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 no problem. When, one nil. When, when one nil. When boss calls another big boss daddy, oh, you know what they're talking about. Oh, you know what they're talking about. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let D-Black look at you and say daddy. We have kids. We have kids. You can call it daddy. He's referring to our children. Okay, let's do it. Our children, our real children. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, you said you said our real children. There's daddy, <laughs> there's daddy and there's daddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he had to add real children. Oh, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yo, right. Black, welcome to the studio. Thank you, guys. I mean, I know, I know this place is not new to you because you've been here already, you know. Yes, um, it's my second but, second. but once again, yeah, one of the very first squad to actually have access to the place when we did our opening. Mm. Yep, uh, yeah. Officially. Yeah, yeah, the launch. You know, with D Black, we're going to have a lot of conversations. And it's also going to be a masterclass for a lot of you out there because uh, you know how we've been talking a lot about one, sustain yourself in the industry. Two, thinking of how to be able to push your music, you know, to places. Being an entrepreneur in this game, understanding the game, managing yourself as well as others. Uh, whether, you know, Sefa was here recently. She can't talk plain. She say, you know, hey, Frida Ryan, Sefa, Frida yeah. Ryan. She says, she says she left Black Avenue Music. Um, you know, yeah, she gave Frida, all the props. Frida did I think she didn't have, you know, when you're like, when you start out and, and you see that Charlie, I can't cry, let me do. Patience. You're in a rush to like. She didn't have patience. Door. Yeah, she didn't have the patience. And what I was trying to do at Black Avenue was I wanted everybody to, 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 to grow. A lot of people forget about artist development mm. in, mm. in the music industry here. Oh, yeah. I, I needed everybody to take their time and watch certain things. So what I did was I did, I did uh, two music videos mm -hmm. that had everybody on the label on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I looked up who people were talking about the most. Oh. Who was getting the attention. So I saw it was Safa first and then Gage second mm. and then Frida third. Mm. Oh. So I said, okay, guys, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to do videos for everybody. I'm going to get everybody a big feature. And then after I was actually start working on your project. So we're going to do Safa first. We're going to do Gage second. And then mm. next year, we're going to do Frida. And I'm sure Frida like, nah, I can't wait one year right. for mm. these two right. first before me. Mm. And the deal with, with Charter House and MTN was, okay, we have a budget. You got to get free that car. You got to get three songs in a year. And this, after a year, is done. So mm. we did that. And then after the year was done, she was like, nah, she wants it quick. And we didn't want to do it that quickly. So we all decided, you know what, let's let her go and let her pursue other avenues. Was, was she wrong to have felt... That she no, was she wasn't. I'm ready a new to artist, you know, see, demand you, more. You can't even tell the artist you're going wrong and expect them to say, "Okay, I'm going yeah. wrong." And I said they have to actually see it and learn it. Yeah, you have to see the mistakes yourself, mm. and then you have to learn from them yourself. That's the only way you can grow. Everybody's made mistakes mm. growing up in the industry. Mm. You know, so you, you you have to see the mistake yourself. You have to learn from it yourself. That's the that's what will keep you in the game, actually. She, okay, I mean, that, that was even going to start our conversation, but I mean, once it just come up, I just, I just want to, um, um, you know, throw more light on it. So, well, uh, Frida was like, um, one, she felt there were too many people in the label. Yeah. For you, a label boss, how do you feel about that? Okay, so I was trying to do something different. I wanted everybody to have their team. I wanted you to have, so Frida came with like two managers from the jump, mm. but mm. I think they, they, they had issues and then they left. So then I, I had Salty take over that space. So everybody has their team. You guys create a plan, bring it. Let's dissect it. Let's make it as good as we can. And then let's put a budget to it and mm. start. And even Sefa's project took us three years to get it off the ground. Yeah. Like we did, the first song was a song 
called Marry Me with Jupiter. You guys don't even know it. <laughs> then the second one was a song yeah. called Do You. Mm-hmm. Then there was a third one called Pepe with Be Sakeda. And those three songs, yeah, they were there. But mm-hmm. the fourth mm-hmm. song, Sugar, is what made her get the attention that she mm-hmm. was waiting for. So mm-hmm. it was a process. And that was like year two or year three. Mm-hmm. Then we went to other songs. Then came You Choke. Then Sark Heard Fever jumped on it. And Sefa became who she is today. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's a whole process. Sefa spent five years with me. She's yeah. she's she's a beauty, she's pretty. Um, I see. There's also that loyalty in there. What has been the story with Sefa? Um, she she stayed on with the label. Mm-hmm. What has been the story with her? I, I couldn't even tell you anything negative. Mm. It's been a lot of positives. Only that a lot of people don't know Sefa as an introvert. Once she comes on stage, is like a different person. After mm. that, she becomes a different person. Once mm. she gets off air here. It's another story. She's in her room reading a book. Mm. And Sefa has not ever sent me a message, ever in the five years that I've known her, without adding please or thank you. Yeah, ever. Yeah, I know, right? People like that. Yeah, mm. natural. Till today. Yeah, you make me miss mm. someone right Boss, now. Please, like, thank you. Touch <laughs> Boss, please, thank you. Every day. Very appreciative. Yeah, yeah, Lenny, yeah, Lenny is taking accolades for that as well, you know? Like, well, you're, uh, you're also like yeah. yeah. Oh. I think it's really important. It's, a, it's, it's about um, communication, human wow. relation. It's, it's really important. It's really important. She's, so. she's, 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 she's been... And Safa says to me, oh, the contract is not up, but let's renew it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and I think we renewed her contract last year when it wasn't even... Is it an issue of maturity? Do you think she might perhaps be more mature than mm-hmm. the others on the label? No. Okay. So, so what I did with the label was I said I said to Breezy, I said Breezy, pick an artist. Um, I don't want you to just be like a producer making beats, guy, man, and that's it. So I structured a deal with my team members. I said we're gonna do a deal where, okay, Breezy, you're in charge of Frida Ryan's project. Make sure we have twelve songs from Frida every year. Hmm. Whether it's produced by you or your friend Kill Beats, whoever, any money that comes to the table off of Frida Rhymes, you get 10% for the rest of it, as long as the contract is. So if she performs, her streaming, everything, you get 10% of that. Just make sure the music is done. Here's the studio keys, run it. Frida Rhymes, you get 45%. Label gets 35%. Road manager gets 10 I think. And that's how I structured it for I said Breezy pick an artist. Breezy picked um Weiser. Okay. Mm. Um my 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 the manager of my club, Fadi, that's my childhood friend. I said pick an artist, he picked Darling Gage. One of my friends picked Nina Ritchie, my cousin picked Cobla Jr. I picked Sefa. So I said, okay, let's start this. I did everybody's contracts and we started it. But then things didn't go the way we all planned. So if I decided, okay, I'll, I'll do it. And, you know, like, she was the first She was first in line anyways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was kind of like, okay, I'm ready to go now. But it takes time. Yeah. Developing an artist takes a lot of time, and you have to understand the game. Mm. Mm. You have to, you have to, you have to be. Is it, is it difficult dealing with females more than males or males more than females? That's the same for me. Especially when the female understands what she's about. So if I doesn't stress, man. Mm-hmm. I thought. But I've seen the female stress, the one yeah. that with the stress too. I've seen that too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, D Black, with all the people you have mentioned, they're all um, under Black Avenue music, right? Yeah. But we can we can actually pick Sifa out of the group and say that, okay, she's actually heading somewhere with her career. Would you want to share some plans that you have for the others? Is And is Nina Ricci still with you? Okay, so Nina wasn't signed... Went up executive producing Nina. She was mm. doing her executive production. I was, mm-hmm. This is we're just ma- managing her stuff oh. in Ghana. Okay. But she moved back to Canada, so yeah. Oh. Look, I mentioned right. the list of females, and then ask this question. The mm. question I'll let you. Why ask is Jay looking me. at me? <laughs> Peace hide. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's my that's that's the mm-hmm. Peace hide. Mm-hmm. Nina Ricci. Mm-hmm. Sefa. Uh, uh, Siri, I need your attention on this. This, this, this. <laughs> He's hiding I, I Richie, Sefa. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> no, I know where you're going. I see where you go. 
That one means I don't watch you. I don't know how you know that. I see, I see, I see where it, they go. It, it, no, no. Oh, wait. no the He's universe high. has its way of aligning things. He's hiding in Arichi. Uh-huh. Sefa. Uh-huh. That's sweet. So let me tell you what. So I'm walking at, I'm walking at, um, I'm walking in, um, uh, Heathrow. Okay. So I'm very sad afternoon. Walking in at the walk at the couch. I leave. My mind did plenty. Then, in fact, there was this girl standing in front of, walking ahead of us with her, her luggage and Charlie, like, looking all curvy. Now, everybody that was behind her was watching this girl. Okay? But so, you, I mean, you, you get the silent conversation amongst everybody. Some old women, some old <laughs> men, but we're all walking to Terminal 5. Cool. Ah, Charlie, who be this girl? So, we walk, and then she made a stopover. She, bu- she bought something, so we all passed. Everybody passed. All the Ghanaians walking to Terminal 5 passed. <laughs> then, I get, I get on the elevator... And then somebody is standing behind me and taps my shoulder and says, Jay, I tell it was a girl. I was like, you, hey, where are you from? You, you, you have shut down, you have shut down Terminal 5. So we start no, everybody, they watch me like, oh, <laughs> so you <don't> know. <laughs> <laughs> you know who that was? Your sense of You said Canada. Oh, oh, Canada. Uh, uh, you know, like, yo, yo like, yeah, I win. She's <laughs> also another very good person. Yeah, very. Yeah, very, very. Good. But she didn't understand or she doesn't understand that to make it in Ghana. Yeah. But for 95% of the time, you have to be here. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah. very difficult to live outside of Ghana yeah. and, and market the music because the, you're not here to touch the people. Touch base with the people. You yeah. know, it's very difficult. And she had a very hard time deciding whether to move here or, or, or mm. go back and forth. And the back and forth is very difficult. It's financially draining, it's emotionally draining. It's very difficult. She's also another very... She's as driven as Sapphire. They're all mm-hmm. both very, very like, mm. driven and dedicated to what they want to do. Yeah? Now we started the conversation about artist management. Um, how do you finance all of them, you know, and, and create equality amongst all, everyone so nobody feels, uh, you know, Lesbian. feels like I'm left out of the conversation Le- in that beginning stage? It's, it's very important. Um, so... The first time I ever did this was Joey B. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Joey B was my next door neighbor. Mm-hmm. And one thing started looking out for me. Somebody looked out for me. There's a sound engineer, Surreal knows him. He's called Waxy. So when I was in a group with um, Kweku T, we had like um, a VGMA nomination. We had a Channel 1 nomination. We did like a, a mixtape project. I think Surreal was on one of yeah. the songs. Hey, brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, my legend. Your gray hair is a lot. <laughs> but Yomo is fading. <laughs> this is in 2009. So in 2010, Pico T says he wanted to do a solo project. So um, I should go do a solo project too. So we split ways. And I didn't have the money to finance to finance what I was doing. Mm-hmm. But somebody asked me for a feature. And, and the studio I had to record, I was in Labadi. Mm. So I went to the studio in Labadi. I did the feature. And I met the owner of the studio. He was a sound engineer called Waxy. And Waxy just took a liking to me. And I asked, oh, what's going on with you and Kweku? I thought, Charlie, Kweku said we would do solo, solo things. So, mm-hmm. But I tried to put my songs together. And he said, listen, come record your whole project here. Yeah. Um, for free. Yeah. Just don't forget me when you blow up. Mm. Until this day, it's been 14 years. He still mixes and masters all my songs. Mm. I have a studio at home. I have a studio at the label. He, he came and set it up. He does everything sound for me till today. So he gave me the opportunity to record. He recorded about 33 songs mm. for me. We picked 16 for the album. And that's how my, my, my journey started. So I also said to myself that any time I had the opportunity to help somebody else, I'll do the same. Mm. Without necessarily thinking about the financial game. Yeah, I'm a businessman, but when you're passionate about somebody's music or, or somebody's journey, mm-hmm. that's what will push you to invest your money in there. Hopefully you make some money as well. Both of you make some money as well. But Waxy is the one that made me understand this. So I did it for Joey. I did it for Breezy. Breezy's story is another amazing story altogether. You know, Breezy was like the he was like the main engineer's small boy. Mm. Hey, Run around guy. Pick mm-hmm. this up for me. Mm-hmm. And Breezy stayed in Tema. So one studio's over at like two, three AM. We're in North Key. Going to Tema is another it's crazy. Mm-hmm. So Breezy was sleeping in the studio. Mm. And 
Joey B was recording his project. And then Joey B and the sound engineer producer at the label at the time had a fight. Woman matter, something. <laughs> so, so, so. I think Joey threatened him or something. And he didn't come to the studio the next day. The day after he didn't come. We didn't see him for a very long time. So the small boy in the studio was sitting behind the computer. And then he asked you, Charlie. You, you like this beat? Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Try your luck. Uh, not really. Yeah. Okay, I'll do another one. You know, then the day after. So I don't know this is going on with the engineer and Joey B. So the video calls me the next day. I'm coming to Ghana. We should get in the studio. So I said, yo, where's Sammy? The video's coming to Ghana tomorrow. I need, I need beats now. Then they told me the story. <laughs> it's like, ah. When nobody tell me, Breezy, do you have any beats? Breezy opens all his folders. Hmm. Play, play. Uh, so I like some of them. The video comes. It comes with Sheezy. He said, yo, I also found this kid on the street. He's called Sheezy. He makes beats. Mm-hmm. So right there on the spot. The video and Breezy created a beat. Me and the video did the collab with Kaigo 2013. Mm-hmm. The next day, Breezy's making more beats because he thinks the video will come. He has some more. <laughs> then Joey B hears it. And he says he likes this one. Then he makes Tonga. Ah. Sakura jumps on it. Boom. Then Rizzi plays another beat for me. I don't like it. Becca comes to the studio. She's like, mm, I don't like it. <coughs> VVIP come to the studio. They hear that beat. They're like, mm, they want something else. So they produce something else. That's when they did Selfie. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. the new VVIP. Uh-huh. VVIP. <coughs> then Castro comes and he hears that beat. He says, that's my next single. The beat that everybody said they didn't, didn't like. like it. So, uh, so he starts freestyling on it. And he says, Black, freestyle on it too. That's say what's it? Wow. Then Breezy just Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. exploded. And that, that week. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Wow. Back to back wow. to back to back. That's oh, nice. Wow. Yeah, when, when, when Destiny is aligned there, Charlie. Mm-hmm. Everything falls that's in big. place. That's, that's a, so that's, that's what a you mean by story. being patient and yep. allowing the things to yeah. align and, and fall in place. After three years of staying in the studio, not going home. And Breezy never went back to Tama again after that. He never went back home. After those songs, he was the one opening the gates for us to go to VGM and lock the gates and say, okay, Mon Combra. <laughs> now this year, he's a nominee. Wow. Then he wow. won and he won. Yeah, wow. That's, the year, that's dedication. Yeah. Now he has his own studio, his own crib. You know, and and I, I like stories like this. Was that, was that the same year he lost the studio? So when we won... 21 producer of, of the, the year, year, yes. Me and Castro song one song of the year. Yeah. So we went to celebrate. Yeah. I think we need to push your mic closer to you. Yeah. We, we went to celebrate. Mm. We came back at 7 o'clock in the morning. Somebody had robbed the studio. Yeah, oh. he posted it. I think yeah. that's yeah. why on your Twitter, actually. Yeah. He forgot to lock the studio door. Like the house doors, everything was locked. But the, the door to the studio, he didn't lock it. So as soon as you opened the door, it was open. Somebody took all the screens. The, the computer, Hard the external drive. Things. It had Castro's album. It had Sakodia's song. No, Rankin as well. Album. No, Pater Rankin's, luckily, I sent it to him. My woman, the stamps, my oh. Yeah. So the files, it took everything. Ah. So Castro's album. I, mean, I only have steals, like two songs. Who steals songs? <laughs> right. <laughs> Which thief steals songs? Sometimes, to sometimes the sabotage. No, no, or they just wanted the, um, the electronics. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it's, it's interesting because you look at all the highs they experience and then they go celebrate, they come back and then mm. they've basically lost the next stage of their, yeah. of their next high. Yeah. You know, so I, I can imagine what the team were well, going it through. It was even crazier when like a few Castro tours <coughs> disappeared. Ooh. At that time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Before their awards. Oh. Yeah. And the songs had blown up. Yeah. And we never performed the songs before. We, we had, um, so at that time you had Seho, Castro featuring me, mm-hmm. yeah. and we had personal person, personal person, me featuring him. And you look at all like the radio charts, Seho is number one, mm-hmm. yeah, person, yeah. number two, or number three, or vice versa. And then Castro had like another two songs on number seven and number eight mm-hmm. with Sakwa the Adonai, the winning yeah. role, Charlie. and the one with Kenata and um, Asamwajan mm-hmm. at the same time, like four songs mm-hmm. featuring Castro. It was wild. So we're, we're, we're looking at the Jay-Z and our Kelly store, like mm-hmm. a rapper and a singer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. And we're trying to emulate it. Mm-hmm. So we're taking bookings in New York, Canada. We mean that thing. So we say, okay, we're not going to perform for Ghana yet. Smoke a wait. And then it, it just happens. 
Castro wasn't signed to Black Avenue Music, no, but he had a relationship. With but Black he was there every day. Wow. From the day he did say, oh, he, he didn't, I don't think he recorded anywhere else. Mm. He was wow. always there. Because I was living in the house, and the extension of the house, yeah. what we call boys' quarters, mm. was just bedrooms and a studio. So everybody could just chill there. Joey B was there. Everybody was just having a good time. So it was a very, really interesting space to be in. So he was there all the time. And then he said, oh, he was going to shoot the Adonai video in South Africa and then come back. And I was producing Peace Hyde show. Uh -huh. So he's supposed to be a guest on Peace Hyde show. But as soon as he comes back, he'll do it. So he goes, South Africa comes. Then he has to go to a funeral in Kumasi. And his brother is his manager, mm. called Kwame. Mm. So they said, okay, we're going to Kumasi. When we come back, we'll come and do a piece of show. Uh. So he goes, he leaves on a Friday. Or Saturday, I can't remember. So somebody calls me on Sunday morning to tell me Castro's down in Adan. I said, nah, he's in Kumasi. Hmm. <laughs> then I get another call. So I go on Instagram to see if he's posted Kumasi. So I don't bother myself. No picture. I go on his brother's page, no picture. I call his phone, no answer. I call his brother. His brother says, oh, Castro didn't come with him. So my journey invited him to Anna, so he alone did Kumasi. I was like, eh? <laughs> Sorry. And that's how the whole... <sighs> so imagine his brother hearing this story. In Kumasi? In, in Kumasi, at a funeral. And having to sit in a bus. It was long hours. Hearing this, right? <clears throat> See, that's some familiar. And, and his phone is on 5%. <laughs> ha! Oh. And if his phone dies on the bus. He was sitting there in silence till he gets to a car. With his mind going crazy thinking. on yeah. a five hour journey. Yeah. <sighs> wow. Yeah. Castro. That's uh, how how did the passing of Castro affect you and with all the plans that you guys had to do? Mm -hmm. How was that for you? That's when I stopped putting music out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so about four years. Yeah. I was recording once in a while, but I wasn't I didn't put anything out from that period for to like 2020. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I didn't see myself. I think I did only one performance for Ignis, Foresight MVAs, I think two years after that. But I didn't see myself performing those songs with the person I did the song with. We can't yeah. find his body. And they, those were huge at that time as well, so pressure would have yeah. been more. So, mm. so me and me, the person not the... And me, I did where I did. I did perform the song they collect. I, I couldn't do it. So I left the music alone. But it made me, it made me, um, it made me start investing in the other things that I was passionate about. Mm. So I, that's when I, I, I started doing like events. So I, I did, um, I started something called Celebrity Soccer. I did um, Bukum Banku versus Aite Powers at the Kumasi Sports Stadium. Mm. And I was very successful, and I built my club, Onyx. Um, I started other things that I was passionate about. Then the Breezy convinced me to sign on the new artists as well. So that's what took up all of my time. And then 2010, I said, um, I'm going to get back to the music. When I started, I had a song. I had a song with Medical, Kidi Kwame, and COVID came, <laughs> slowed it down. Mm -hmm. Then the year after is when I did the German Minister album. Mm. What has been D Black's um, best investment, entrepreneurial investment, and the worst entrepreneurial investment? <laughs> 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 the worst, I don't know. Man. I wouldn't call it worst, but it didn't yield profits. That's mm -hmm. the, the, the whole group of artists at the same time. I didn't yield any profits, and then I would say, my best investment is in myself. Mm. Mm. I, I want to know, having that studio space and um, having all these talents come through, is there any artist that you regret not signing? Someone who had access to <laughs> There's the a space. lot of people that came, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give, me a list. give me your three. Uh -huh. Ms. V came, but she came as a group. 
She came with yeah, me. Yeah, when they were... When oh, they yeah, when they just won the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like three girls, <laughs> three makeup, three, three, makeup, three outfits, <laughs> three shadows, three shoes, mm. three chaperones. I beg you. I beg you. <laughs> <laughs> how do you, how do you communicate? I mean, off, off the back of that question, how do you communicate the no to the artist without you know breaking the hearts. breaking the hearts and <laughs> um, especially dealing with a woman? You know when they were, they were all very different, Mr. Easy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I had that as well. Mr. Easy used to sit on the steps of my studio and chill. We all go chop gobe. Yeah, wow. And then one day I turn on my, my phone, go on social media, and Mr. Easy is the biggest star in Africa. I'm like, Was that with the bank lies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. before, he had PP dance before bank lies. Yeah, that's what yeah, he showed me. Yeah. Like, hmm. yeah, so they, they actually record PP dance from my day. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. before Jules put him on bank lies. Him, wow. him, I thought <laughs> I would talk to Breezy. Miss V and her team. I think it was Nadia Bwari that brought them. And I think they got a well, deal. High profile, what they bring? <laughs> Delegation. No, her sister was in the group. Okay. Yeah, Samira okay. Bwari. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, and then I think Richie said, okay, he'll do it. So I didn't have to say anything. Mm. Um, and then there's one that I didn't even realize. That was Famia. Wow. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even realize till he said it himself. Because wow. there were a lot of people coming to the studio. Yeah. So many, especially after Breezy blew up as producer. Producer, yeah. Yeah, everybody wanted the sound. There were a lot. And uh, at that time, I was focused on Joey B, so I said, oh, let's hold on. There were a few other, others that I said, okay, let's, let, let's see where it goes. But and Joey was like the focus. And I had known him since like I was 12 years old. Mm. I remember I said, yo, Joey could be the biggest rapper in Ghana because he was so talented. Yeah. Joey was diverse. Yes, very, very. There's a lot to, 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 to capture in the next, uh, let's say, 45 minutes. Let me ask this question about um, the music business. Um, D Black, does the music business, is it a profitable venture in Ghana? I don't mean music business across the world. In Ghana, is it worth, because you are, you are a musician and an entrepreneur, entrepreneur as well. And I'm very sure, I mean, the club brings you money, you know, um, the, the, the um, Oasis, uh, yes, the brings you money. Over. The new place, the restaurant brings you money. Um, maybe, but, but the artist was, or the artist business investment was one of the ones that didn't yield profit. So mm -hmm. I'm asking this question about the, the music business, is it worth it in Ghana? I said it just yesterday. I think that... Inclusive of yourself. Yeah, I think that there's something that's become even more important than the actual music. I think it's the, the brand. Mm. Brand building, I think, is, has become, if you had to split into and give value in percentages. I think the highest, I'll give the highest percentage of building a brand that's sustainable. I'll give an example. I don't have to have a hit song right now to be booked for shows and appearances. I don't think Sakura has to in as well. There are a few brands like that. Um, I feel like the fans have to want to emulate the artist, want to be like the artist want to even sound like the artist, live like the artist. So your brand has to exude that superstar power for you to be able to leverage off it or maximize, branch off into other businesses. And then that's what makes the music business strong. Mm. Because in Ghana, we don't earn royalties. Um, majority of the revenue that you make off being an artist is off performing and streaming. And most of the streaming revenue doesn't come from Ghana. So then what's next? Mm. You have to leverage off your brand and create other avenues of revenue that you're passionate about. Then it makes business sense. Especially when you have when you have grand ideas about your future, where you want to see yourself in the next couple of years. If you focus on just creating the music here in Ghana, I doubt you you get to that pinnacle of success that you're dreaming about. Mm. I feel like building a brand <coughs> has become very important. Mm. It, it's, uh, okay, sorry, zero. Just hinging, <coughs> hinging off that, um, what you said, um, I agree with that perfectly because I've known you for a while and music brands come and go. Right, but you've been able to keep the D Black brand. It's a lot. D Black brand, man, <laughs> Keep the D Black brand together. 
and relevant through all the eras. How difficult has that been? Because I don't go mention names, but we've seen them come and go and change and switch mm -hmm. and fall. But the D Black brand has been because even when the D Black brand was not making music for four years, mm -hmm. the D Black brand was still relevant. How hard was that? I'm, I'm special. <laughs> We're special. Yeah, we're special. <laughs> you know, like, I'm very, well, like, when I first started, yeah, I would, I had, I would have a song, and he was on Vibe FM. Nobody was playing rap, hip-hop music, like, Anglophone rap, like, English mm -hmm. rap music on the radio. Only a few people were playing it. So when I did that move and brief, those move and brief songs with Jaso and Kwekuti, and they started playing it on radio, they were playing it on Vibe, YFM, Hits. I would be driving, and I would park, and I would take my phone and text YFM, Hi, my name is Hajoa. Please play me the Black and Kwekuti song. I'm requesting it for my friend Serial in Adenta. Wow. And I'll <laughs> type the same message to Joy FM, to His FM, to Vibe FM. Oh. And I'll drive for 30 minutes and I'll pack it in and I'll send another message. Ah, until they go play the song. And I'll switch oh. to the stations, making sure they that you're playing it. I'll learn the presenter's names. So when I'm even sending the message, I'll add the presenter's name. To personalize it. Hi, J. Foley. Please play. <laughs> It's actually really good. Yeah. And I did that for a very long time. So the music became... A lot of people don't really realize that I'm not really a... At the time, we're saying hip life, right? I'm not really a hip life artist. As a GH rap, that's what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. But I did it so much that you actually felt like I was making hip life music. I wasn't making hip life music. I was making hip hop music. But it became so commercial that you actually put me in, cat in a category <coughs> with, with 4 it's 4 Yeah. And like you say, hip life song there, yeah. And you put Vera there, you put Four mm. X Four song there, you put Boga Boga, you put you put all the big songs. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I was a I was a it wasn't nobody had done it. Mm. Tell me who did it? Like the people who were doing English rap music with me, nobody was going to be in song there, yeah. But I I rapped on, I rapped Pigeon in English, and mm -hmm. and I was on song there, yeah, so many times. Because I'll, I'll push and push and push till it will be from every angle in any way. Hmm. Did you did you ever go, get, get caught in the, the Payola conversation? Do you know the funny thing? Hmm. God has been so good to me. I can count on my finger the number of people that have asked me for money to play my music. Oh, wow. Yeah, very few people, very few DJs have asked. So when things start, started looking up for me, I would always give. Right. 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 Yesterday, we're having a conversation. I was going to get to yeah, Lenny, as... Lenny mentioned uh, <laughs> yesterday in the conversation mm -hmm. about, um, you know, being intentional on promotion. Because sometimes artists feel like the media owes them a responsibility to promote their music. Yeah, crazy. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I like the bit where you, where you spoke about parking, stopping, texting to create a certain conscious. effort to try and, a conscious mm -hmm. effort to try and promote your music. I want to understand what um, for you works, or what are some of the strategies that D Black puts in place when he releases a song? It goes viral. Vera, it went viral. I mean, you name them. Seho. Probably, uh, um, what's the other one? Um, with with Castro. personal person, personal, personal, person. personal person, you know, they all go viral, but I'm I don't think it's just a matter of putting on your status and hoping that it, it works out. It's crazy because you see, most of my biggest songs had the smallest budgets mm. for mm. promotion. Vera was even a mistake, I didn't plan for that to be the main single. The main single was. Change Your Life featuring EL. Oh. Mm. And, you know, before I got into the music scene, I was in the back being doing, like, road manager duties for Reggie Rockstar. So, Reggie was supposed to do his next album, and he wasn't in that space. So, I'm the guy that would push him to go to the studio to make that album, registration. And 
when I decided to now jump in and make my own music, I got a BET nomination. Which we'll talk about the BET and the Channel O as well later on. Yeah, yeah. I got a BET nomination, and he was like, "Wow, you got to take it to the next level now because yeah, you have a BET nomination, but you're not the biggest artist in Ghana." How did you do it? Um, with BET, okay. We need more than 45 minutes on this show. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is a long... So when I was doing rap, the GH5 music in Ghana, there was a lot of people. Skillions, C-Rail, J-So, E-L, Scientific. Even you, you had a song. In, yeah, we, we, we know last. <laughs> like, if I do my last album title, we know we'll continue. <laughs> I won't do it again. I won't do it again. <laughs> so, and, and I was looking at the people that had done it before our era. Mm -hmm. Blitz, Mensa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I realized that they didn't have commercial success in Ghana. So I was like, mm. but then DSTV was heavy. And if you watch MTV Base and Channel O, you see all the Nigerian rappers, everybody. Yeah. Nitu C, Ikechuku, mm -hmm. all of them. So I was scared. There were so many of them. So I said, ah, let me get past that avenue. So I would, my house was a junction before Chatter House. Mm -hmm. And to submit your, your music video to MTV and channel, oh, you have to have a, a tape yeah, called DV tape. DV tape. Right. Mini DV. Mini DV. So I would walk from my house to meet uh, Daniel Kwashiga, uh -huh. the camera guy at Chatter yeah. House. Yeah, Daniel. With my, with my video. He shot the first video for me. I said, I bet put on two DV tapes. So you take Chatter House DV, old DV tapes, Miss Malaga DV tape. <laughs> Yala. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> if you love DV tapes. Yeah, sorry. Mas got to eat. I edited my first video in the Chatter House studio after closing time. Wow. Yeah, that's that's how they helped me out. That video cost me 300 cities. Uh, what video is this? A move. Me, Ooh. Kwego, TJ, so. So that video, we, we, I'll take the DV tape from Chatter House and I'll walk to Circle. It's a straight line. You get to Circle. You go call the right, the left. The post office was there. Mm. And I'll send the DV tape to Channel O and MTV in South Africa. So when they did it, uh, they did play the video. Wow. No middle man. The pipeline, they work. <laughs> because Channel O advertised, <laughs> send your music video to this address. Which a lot of artists. Drive, yeah. Drive, M Mnet Studios. The address is still in my head. Nobody did one from Ghana. So me, I, I go do one. <laughs> and they started playing it heavily. So, Channel announced nominations, Best West African Video of the Year. My video we did it. <laughs> <laughs> and the current artist of the year, Chami Kwame, the only two of us from Ghana, Daily Graphic Publisher. Chami Kwame, G Black, we could see nominated for Channel One Awards in South Africa. My mother saw it. That's what my mother believed. Oh, <laughs> Listen, Listen, so, I'm fine. Fine. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you post something that G Black has forgotten. That shocked us, the 12 apostles who were in SA that day. Mm -hmm. I think at that channel, all you performed. Yeah. Listen, whilst the rest of the Ghanaian artists and entrepreneurs and media personalities had come all the way to SC, we trying to get ourselves inside channel O. <laughs> when we went to the city of the VIP eventually, it was D Black. And he was the only person I was that the, the audience, like, they jumped to, like, outside. Listen, Whiskey performed that day. They know my name. Mm. Mm. SA people don't mind whiskey. I'm telling you, that they were there. Like, I, I watched with my own two eyes. I said, this guy, he won. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I won. I won. I won. I won. West African artists of the year, Channel O Awards. In the category was Whiskey, The Bunch, <laughs> The Square. But I had a song with a Nigerian female artist called Mo Cheddar. Mo Cheddar, uh, yes. I had, I had promoted heavily. In heavily, yeah. I remember yeah. the Mo Cheddar program. Yeah. I, 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 like, you had to text to a South African number, the short it. code. So I had a South African manager who pushed it for people to vote. It was a plus two seven number. Ooh. That was the advantage. advantage. Yeah, but I'd gone Nigerians. for three years, 2010, 2011, 2012, and lost. I went, hmm. I went, went about six times in total. But the first three times, it was zero. I think the fourth time was when I won one award from Channel O. So that means you kept pushing even after the first try. You yeah. kept sending the DVs, you kept sending the DVs. Did you, so, did you eventually, like, create or form relationships? Because clearly so, you found yeah, some people. Yeah, in, yeah a lot. So... MTV is owned by the same company that owns BET. Mm -hmm. So now I sent it to MTV, I sent it to Channel Viacom, 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 Viacom. 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 So B M MTV, South Africa, they gave it to BET. Okay. So BET started playing my music video, but no Ghanaian music video was on there. So I had very little competition. When they're saying who's best international artist, Africa, Ghana, 
I had the most the most content available. I had the yeah. most content. I had like Visibility six key on on BT before anybody started thinking about doing it. So that's hmm. how BT happened. Then the, one of the one of the reps, my God bless her soul, she passed away, Lillian Blankson. Yo, yeah. So after that nomination, then she came down to Ghana. She said, oh, I'm Ghanaian too. And that's why she created a cipher. And she said, okay, we're going to do a cipher. I want to pitch it to my bosses. They don't really believe in you guys' stuff, really. Because it's African, blah, yeah. blah, blah. But I do. And I remember when I went for the BTs, um, the bunch won. In that category, I knew I wasn't going to win. I had mm-hmm. one album, and my category was Anjali Kiju, <laughs> Fali Pupa <laughs> from Congo, mm. Two Faced from Nigeria. Yeah, legacy, legacy, legacy. Ah, oh, oh, skillers. Oh, if I even wanted, would have slapped me. Let's <laughs> say, <laughs> bring it. Skillers. <laughs> she came and she said, uh, "We're going to do a cipher with you, and and then um, I want somebody in Ghana who can rap in Ghana." And I said, "Oh, it's tiny." I want somebody who could spit crazy and um anyway. I said it's Adam. Mm. And Tree, I didn't even have to say anything. It was Sakwaj automatically. I want Reggie Rockstone, the legend. But I want another English rapper and a female. I said another English rapper. Then Chow. Mm. It was Jaso. Oh, Jaso was my favorite rapper at the time. Mm. But then I, I, I was in a group with Kweku and we had broken up. But I was still my boy. Yeah. So I said. And she heard quick when she's like, yo, yes, 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 yes. And then the problem came with who's the female? Mm. Mm. Because we didn't have a female. Mm. Then there was a girl on. Why? XFM. Was it X? It was X. It was NX at that time. BBG. Yeah, BBG. Yeah, BBG. Yeah. BBG. BBG. XFM. Yeah, she would rap on her shows. So I asked her to send me some of her stuff. So I forwarded it to a BT lady and she heard it. And she said, okay. And we shot it. And the bosses approved. And they edited on yeah. BT International. So that's how the whole BT. So basically, you are you are a living testimony of the importance of networking. Yeah, very important. Get to the right people. You know, like, you, you go into a space with your manager mm. or an artist manager. You see the bosses of Grammys and the MTVs and big corporations, and nobody takes anybody's number. Nobody has a business card in their pocket. Mm. How? Mm. Mm. Maybe which I know what... And, and, and MTV or what I went to, I had my business cards in my pocket. Hmm. I have like four booklets full of business <laughs> cards. And I feel it's important. Email addresses. I have like a, I have an email database list of like 15,000 DJs. Wow. You have it in a list. Jfully2131 as Gmail. Oh, Charlie! <laughs> wow. Roll call! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. He emailed me yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's crazy. I'll, 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 I'll collect everything because it's important for the business that we're in. It's not just about the music. Music is, I think, music is thirty percent of what mm. you need to succeed in the industry as an artist. Networking, hundred percent, building your brand. And 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 I feel like when you when I when you make money. In this industry, make sure that everybody that contributed to the success of you give them something. Everybody needs to feel Someone appreciated. Needs to eat. Yeah. And money is the biggest appreciation in this industry. And that's what we're all working for. Do you think you've lost it from your t- looking at your how exactly things, what I was just about yeah, to ask? How that things were with there was you. a bit more aggression at that time. Yeah, because because clearly, like you know the thing, like you mm-hmm. know you have the blueprint, right? But for some reason, so, we, we are so, struggling. So, do, do you know, this is just my opinion. I might, I might be wrong. But I feel like the Ghanaian artist doesn't earn enough to be able to share like that. Okay. So, you would hear that Levito has a $50,000 budget for media in New York City. You know why? Because Levito charges $150,000, $200,000 for a show in New York mm-hmm. City. So to say, boys, after this show, let's dedicate $50,000 for this media run in New York. Mm. Let's dedicate thirty k to Accra or mm. Ghana. Um, excuse me, but which Ghana? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we have someone like Shata Wale who's, who's, who, even who, if Shata who, who takes a lot of money for his ends, shows. Even if he earns that kind of revenue. 
He's not gonna take fifty thousand dollars to do to PR. promote his music. <laughs> to, PR, to do PR. Wow. Shoot a crazy video that will play everywhere in the world on, on the highest of standards. Why wouldn't he do that? Because we don't. He, the artist in Ghana doesn't earn a cash company. flow, bro. Even if he gets it, it's not bro, consistent. Fifty thousand dollars times thirteen cities. <laughs> <laughs> mm. it's, it's it's worth money that you can start putting. Six hundred fifty thousand plus. Yeah. yeah. Who's gonna do that? Because we don't earn that type of money. Yeah. And even if you do, it's, it's quote-unquote a fluke. You, you're not going to be bagging that every month or every mm. three months. Yes. So That's but if you have 650,000 Ghana cities, you don't want to take 50,000 out of it to do your Bro, there are artists on your playlist who may be in the whole year. That is the revenue that they amass. The whole year? Yes. Mm -hmm. and this, that, is this... the shocking, that is the shocking details that maybe <clears throat> that not everybody wants to be said on air. Because you did count so our artists are money. just enjoying the stardom publicity. There's more, there's more fame and publicity in our local scene than know, revenue. No, no, don't get me wrong, there's money there, mm. but it's not enough to do what these Nigerians are doing. They're doing, yeah. There's nothing near it. And this 150, 200k I said about the video is at 800,000 now. Yeah, that was at the time. Yeah. yeah so. so imagine, then now they're signed to global labels who have. A marketing budget. So now the money is not really coming from his revenue anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you're signed and there's a marketing budget attached, everything in your power to make your money back will be done. It's true. Okay, I want to challenge this course for a second and get a better explanation or a deeper explanation. So here is an artist in Ghana who possibly in the last quarter of the year, in total, I'm a staff of three music. Um, I take salary. My salary is just enough to get me to move around a cry and you know pay a few bills and, and survive. That's what I earn. Aside from that, um, I mean, for me to smell 50,000 CDs every month would mean that I'm really singing a song that's really nice. Mm -hmm. An artist is possibly within the last quarter of the year, November, December, October, November, December, will we'll hit about 100,000 CDs or 200,000 CDs with all the shows that they've played, mm -hmm. if, we, if we, we, we put it all together. 200,000 Ghana CDs in Ghana isn't enough for a Ghanaian artist to be able to put a 50,000 CD down no, into 50, the detail. No, I'm saying CDs. I'm just quoting in CDs. Mm -hmm. Down to be able to invest back in their craft and their project. I just want to understand oh, okay. the business around it. Okay, so let me give you... So this artist, what's his name? Oh, Foley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's give him a name. Foley. Uh, Foley. Uh, MC Foley. MC Foley. MC Foley. MC Foley. Yeah, yeah. MC Lenny. Okay. I see what you did there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I see it. Let's go. So, so most of the artists in Ghana mm -hmm. are not financing themselves. They're signed to a label. So that 200K, 100,000 is gone already. Mm. Well, most of them are independent indie artists now, like... A lot of these artists. That's what I said. What's the artist's name? I mean, let's say an independent artist. Look, like, if, look let me be, be blunt and say, let, let me pick an artist like, let's say, a Fameye or a Bisa or a, these are all independent Inata. artists. You okay, know. so 200K. Yeah. The music video, how much does it cost? Now, that's the perception that we still carry of these music videos. That is it still the same cost of them charging 50,000 CDs for a video, 40,000 for a video? Yeah, you're lucky. We just shot the first video for 70K. Hmm. Is this cost as in money spent or value of assets and all those things? Altogether, the budget was 70000 well, the, And the one before that was $48. Dollars? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've made 200 k But mm -hmm. really, that 200 k is not 200 k Taxes the road manager who's running with me. I mean, I pay taxes. Yeah. Shout out to Jerry. They sent me a letter. <laughs> so thank you for paying your taxes. Congratulations on paying all your taxes all this year. So shout out to you. Above guys. board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that 200 k you're taking your video revenue out. You're taking the cost of going to the studio, mm -hmm. paying whichever producer. Now we have distribution companies that don't take no money, so they distribute the music for you. Then you know, if somebody invested in you, Got the person's gonna want to cut. So an artist's biggest cost is uh, cost center is the music videos. The marketing and you add the music video in there. There's a marketing budget. So the music videos are content that you take. Now after you've paid all this money for the video, 
it becomes very hard, especially when you're not being financed or you're not signed, to take to money out again and promote it and promote and give to the next man. But then, when they when they support you, and the thing be a for go back, yeah. No, I'm saying this because if I take pen to paper and I do a calculation, and an artist has made over a weekend, played two shows and is backed about 15K or 20K each, about 40,000 Ghana series, mm -hmm. and has a, a video, a music video already in the market and it is, it's in there. Yeah, no, but you see... Yeah, a does lot, a, does a, it, a is it lifestyle that... That too. Because now, you can't stay in there 800 cities a month apartment again. You can't wear the same clothes again. You can't wear the same shoes anymore. Everything's gone up because you're taking a picture now and posting on your Instagram, yep. and you wonder fast to say, "Hey, you the see drip, the drip needs to be flowing." Next level. So you're not wearing those t-shirts anymore. The watch has to change. The ring has to change. Everything has to change. You can't hmm. buy the gobe across the street anymore. Yep. You can't be hopping out of Ubers. Yep. You have to buy fuel if you don't have a car. You have to buy fuel in your friend's car. I still, I it's still feel fun. that. There's a conversation around mismanagement. There is because because it yeah, is not expen it. it is expensive. I shouldn't say that it's expensive to do digital marketing, proper digital marketing. It is expensive. However, there are ways to cut corners around these things, and I feel that Ghanaian artists, most Ghanaian artists with his songs, have made some good monies before, mm -hmm. and owe it to themselves to be able to have reinvested. Because you are a clear example of someone who has done reinvestments. Mm -hmm. And has spread the investment and has used because you've, oh, you've spoken me, about networking. No, I said I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> I made one million now. I mean, that's nine fifty. Mm. Okay, good that money. Back into, but it should be something you are passionate about. If it's the music, put it back in there. If that's what you are passionate mm -hmm. about, so that when you're you're in a hurry to wake up in the morning to go and chase that dream. So is that where we fall short? Because now you see we're talking about the aggression into the global because, space, yeah. but it clearly looks like we, we fought the rhythms of Ghanaian music for a while and said that Ghana music is not penetrating. People are saying it's not nice, it's not nice, it's this, it's that. We understand that bit, but the business bit seems to be uh, a lack or a gap that we have to fill. The aggression has been lost. How well, come? Ghanaians were not aggressive. How the come? Nigerians. Yeah. Let me, let me. I was speaking to a former manager of um, another radio station, and he told me something, and I said, ha. you know these voiceovers like artists do? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is Deep Black, and you're listening to three music. Mm. The Nigerians traded in for airtime in Ghana. So a label says, listen, I'll send you... Davidos, Davido, Linus. Mayo Kuhn, that are all his liners, and make sure you play our songs five times a day, every day. Send me... The you slots, know, the, the PC. Slots, so that we can also follow up. And uh, there's paperwork to it. But which Ghanaian is going to do this in Lagos? Yeah. <laughs> I also, Does I the also paperwork think come we have money? No, no a batter, a batter. airtime. It's a batter. So, so I, I do think... this for you, you put us on. And then make sure that when you are doing your end of year concert, mm. whatever you book us, because we'll give you 30% off. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's I think business. with a suffer scarcity mentality too. And I've seen this up front. I'm sure you've seen it as well. A lot of our artists come from a place where the music is the saving grace, right? So being on air and mentioning the money and thinking we have oversight and can just share it and say, put this one here, put this one here. You're dealing with somebody who's never had 50K. Mm -hmm. That's Fam the first yeah. problem. Family members to the holding leg. The, mm -hmm. From a different reality that you understand like i've managed people where small money karma so let me have you say like this one say go left for you like mm -hmm. what bro mm -hmm. like, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like i, I won't go mention names but <laughs> i feel you you, you, you get what i'm saying look if you ask you plain play because he thinks show now our boy you know that money coming is going to solve all his problems so thinking entrepreneurially that okay let's share it into five pay this guy <laughs> small bring this guy on board do this no he has reached his oasis if for drink sati, then we go walk desert again. again. <laughs> uh -huh. that, you see, that's the so scarcity. And Nigerians are able to put that aside, like what uh, Fields was telling us. Mm -hmm. That uh, who called him David O. Eh? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. David was in the UK. Called Fields that I guess you tomorrow. If you go, if you may come to UK, uh, we there on stage. O2 Arena, come through. The man said he dropped everything, borrowed money, bought that, ended up buying the ticket twice. Landed in the UK without a persuasion. Went to Adekule Go's house, wore some of Adekule's old clothes, 
and hopped on stage. There's an iconic picture of him and David in the O2. Yeah, I saw, I saw him before. That's, I the, said, that's I, the story. I was like, the producer he blew. was broke, my brother. He was broke wearing Adekule Gold's clothes and oh, having debts of tickets in Niger. But he was there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That, you see, they put the scarcity mentality aside and they, they the aggression. Yeah, my first time <clears throat> I was, I went to South Africa with $200. At that time, dollar was mm. two cities. Mm. <laughs> 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 two cities remember me from Ghana. So that's 400 cities. <laughs> dollar, dollar was two cities. Dollar come foul. 400 cities. Wow. And I printed t-shirts in, in Newtown with my name on, on, on mm. it. I had a hat. And then Two-Face and Jay Martins, they were nominated um, with P-Square. And Jay Martins had that song, you know, is it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, is it? Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. And then Two-Face had another song. And we're all in the same category. And Two-Face said, we should go to the mall and shop. <laughs> like, <laughs> there you get amnesia. Eh? Yeah, Your legs start paying. I went to the my pocket and went to them. I didn't even buy a thing. Mm. You know what? I still have that picture mm. of him paying for his hat. The things they, they go shop for what they go wear uh, yeah, for, for the, the show. show. To the awards. Though. Yeah, bring something I saw for Ghana. Yeah. <laughs> well, Come prepared. Up. If I tell us a Ghanaian designer flex you already. I said, I already right. have my yeah, yeah. <laughs> you Come with your face. Right. <laughs> is, is, so, is, is that why after everything you being through with this particular music industry, you still keep investing into it because you've worked, like, you like basically gone through each and every process, each each step of the way you've gone through it. Because I'm, I'm wondering why you still want to put your money back into Ghana music. Because I'm passionate about it. And I, I told you in the beginning, somebody helped me get to the point that that's brought me here. So... Investing back in somebody like Safa who appreciates it, it's actually enough to keep going. To keep going, and is it becoming profitable to still? Yeah, it's already started becoming profitable. Nice. I think about a year ago. Nice. You know, Safa has done extremely well. Joey B two is also somebody that I'm very proud of investing in. You know. mm, that's nice. His brand is a bit different. <laughs> I mean, I wanted him to be like. Super commercial, scatter everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's very, mm, yeah, kakra, kakra, what do you have? I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, high life, kakra. And I'm, ah. yeah, I wanted him to explode, mm. but I'm very proud of what he's become and breezy too. Mm. You know, I can say, okay, I've done a male artist, I've done a female successfully, I've produced a, a producer too successfully, and they all have their own solid brands now. Mm. And that's, that's enough for me. You know? D, why, is it, why is it difficult to have a lot of uh, the female acts? come out or break through like the way we see the young men do so um, aggression direction aggression aggression that's why you think the females are not aggressive enough no it's either you or, or your team that's why uh, um, Bullet was able to achieve that success with Ebony and Wendy Shea because he's aggressive if you won't push he, he's going crazy he's pushing he's entering the doors he's going to every corner because I think he experienced it himself as an artist so understood it I don't think the females have enough aggression behind them or they themselves. Mm. You know, and they're very emotional. Mm. I, I don't think in this business you should attach emotion. It's mm. called a business. Mm. Zero emotion. Try and separate your persona from the business. Right. Mm. That's no. also very important. But, I mean, this problem is not just in Ghana. It's everywhere. Mm. Mm. You count the top ten artists in Nigeria, you find one or two females. Yep. Same thing in the other countries. That's just the way the industry is. Hmm. Now, D Black, um, you spoke about your brand and um, business, right? For the sake of you know people who are also doing music who want to go into business, how do you choose which business to you know push your money into, and how active are you in growing those businesses? And why hospitality? Okay, so what to do with your money? I think it's passion. If you're not passionate about it, don't do it. Me, I enjoy. Mm. I love to have a good time. I love to travel. So um, I'm investing in what I love. I have I have a nightclub. I have a lounge. I have a restaurant. I have a clothing store. I have an ice cream restaurant. I have a men's grooming place. Um, I'm building like a digital station. Next month, next two months, it should be ready. Um, and the record label. These are all, and an events company. These are all things that I'm passionate about. Things that when I was growing up, I said I wanted to do. Mm. So I started with music, and then events. I love to produce con concerts. 
and my road manager that I had from 2011. Um, also loved that, was very passionate about it. We produced Stone Boys Game Concert, boxing uh, events, soccer events, it's things that we love to do. You know, so I started a company with him, um, investing in other artists, passionate about it. My mother was um, quality assurance manager at Ghana Tourism Authority. So my mother's the one who says this is three star. This hotel is four star, mm. this hotel is five star. So I grew up in that environment. So hospitality came as mm, no second nature thing. to me, you know. That's why I went into the club business. And then she'd tell me, okay, this is how you do the paperwork. This is what you have to file, this is what you have to do here. Then I went into the lounge and now the restaurant business. It's things that I love. Uh -huh. So when you love and you're passionate about these things, it doesn't feel like work to you right. anymore. Imagine going to your club, having a good time with your friends, and then when you get home, <laughs> you know, it's, it's an amazing feeling. Let me touch on um, some controversies in the last quarter of the show. <laughs> so, the first one, I mean, now now that ECG has come out was, with a list of people who, who it has cancelled. I was going to ask that too. It has, it has indicated you black because... When Asamajan was missed that penalty for you against Uruguay, you waited until the day you. Till, uh, <laughs> the day you. <laughs> that, 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 that How situation, did you manage that incident? That situation took me by shock. Yeah. At the house. And, and, and I wouldn't say I didn't know. I knew. It happened during COVID when yeah. uh, everything was shut down. So the club wasn't operating. And we just left it. You know, instead of doing the right thing, I'm you know, saying, I beg you, connect back. So they find me. They said, you find me, and they gave me like a, a timeline. And I, it's never happened to me ever in my life. <laughs> so, yeah, it took me by shock. And I've never said this anywhere before. So, yeah, I was very shocked. I was like, ha. Ah, by this time. Luck, because running a club business too is very, um, like, it's uh, capital intensive. Capital intensive, yeah, yeah, very. You know, so. Like when it's... I was building a club, I depleted everything in my life. Hmm. I had to sell my car to finish that place. So it was not something that I, I play with at all. And this is like the se year seven. Wow. That's yeah. nice. And you've made all your money. Have you, have you made your money back? Yeah. I, 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 oh, I, you're still meeting the. After I made the money back in less than two years. And I did another one. Then this is the third one. What What is it about the nightlife that perhaps other people are not seeing? Um, what have you noticed? What What's the gap in there I, that the, people the devil comes that. out in the night? <laughs> 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 people who see it, I mean, it's not for everybody. Mm. It's It's for people who actually enjoy the space. Not everybody should invest in nightlife or hospitality. Mm. You have to be passionate about it and actually understand it to invest in it. Yeah. Did you ever see? Did you ever see yourself? You yeah, know, yeah. owning. 20, 20, 20, 2014. They are telling you the controversies to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are telling you. Don't mind you. <laughs> they are poisoning. Nah, like, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. 20, 2014. Mm. I was Ciroc ambassador. Yeah. Then Belay ambassador. So Ciroc took me to like a lot of different clubs to mm. to, to do activations in different places in the world. So I'm looking and I'm like, yo. Why? Some <laughs> Why am I selling just one brand? You know, for a, a corporation. When I can have my own space and sell all the brands. Hmm. So I said, okay, I'll build, I'll do my own space and sell all the brands. And wow. That's exactly what I did. But maybe to Thanks. ask a little bit about your um, spirituality. Because last weekend you were at Action Chapel. That's yeah. where I church too. Oh yeah. And I, I saw yeah, I saw yeah. I saw you I saw you. A lot of people don't know that about me. Oh, so. very, <laughs> very That's why I church. I I don't know who to shop for. The way the way you lay out to shop for you like. If I use the phrase I've never heard on the show. That's why. That's why. That's why. Does he have this guy's birth set? What question could be coming? No, because you don't have time. I'm like ah. Let me let me check. You say talk now. I go back. Yeah, because I'm, I'm asking this because, um, you know, um, 
many of us do not really get to know the other side of our you know, ah, okay there you go <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, is, is, the, is mercedes your favorite brand uh, car brand yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. okay yeah because yeah, i see you, you love but yeah talk to us about you know wait, wait, wait. let's read it it says <laughs> let them know that the power of god is uh what they've been missing out on church was good church is good god is good d black I have an entrepreneurship and music business conference coming up. Yeah, yeah somebody asked me. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. somebody asked you. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, what, what, what's, what's, what's it like with your faith? You know, um, um, sure I was raised up very Christian. Mm. My mother was very, very, very in tune with Christ. Even when I did my first tattoo, almost all the tattoos on my body have Bible verses right. and, and scriptures. Right. Um, um, God is my best friend. Mm. That's, that's, he's the Alpha. And, and Omega. the Omega, mm. and the reason for everything that has ever happened to me is because I believed and trusted in God. Mm. It's not something that I speak publicly on because it's nobody's business, but... Oh, um, Prisla. I see you have a picture of you know Nadi. Prisla. Yeah, Nadi is the uh, manager yeah, of my Nadi. restaurant. Yes, uh, La, La Maison. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, you, I saw you there. Oh, yes, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Lucisa. Um, yeah. Hey, mm. You know how the church people. Yeah, that's Lucisa. Yeah, that's Lucisa. Yeah. I, I think she's the she she heads the Deputy DTV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Mm. Yeah. So, um, Duncan Williams has been one of my favorite pastors. His kids are my friends. Right. And um, for a very long time, it was very difficult for me to pick a church. Hmm. Also, because a lot of people don't know, I'm actually almost like an introvert. Mm. So when I when I go to church, I really like to be hidden. Hidden. Mm -hmm. But when I go to church, it's it's very. It's, I'm not hidden. <laughs> <laughs> you get the hey, yeah. what's up, baby? But then they told me that there's some way I'd actually that I can hide. And then told me some people in the industry that hide and uh, yeah, don't get disturbed. Yeah. And when close, you can go to yeah. um, Archbishop's office and nobody really yeah gets in your face. So I said, okay, let me. Let me, let me go to action, and I loved it. So that's my church now. Lovely. Oh. People don't watch how much you put in for collection, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's always crazy. I haven't sat in a church like that in a very long time. Mm. So I'm sitting there, and I know collection, I have to get up and go in there. So I'm mm. trying to give my, my guy the money. And I saw on the big screen, Momo mm. numbers. <laughs> <laughs> you helped me. No, I think that came up because of COVID, um, COVID. COVID yes. yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a thing before. until yeah. Yeah. some started before. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I saw it. I mean, on the onset of COVID, tight. a lot of people don't tight. A lot mm. of musicians, a lot of people in the industry don't pay their tights. What does tighting mean to you? Um, so me, apart from giving a tenth of what I make to whatever church I decide, every January I take another tenth of what I made because as a as a as an in, entertainment industry person. Your peak season mm. is December. December. Yeah. Yeah. And luckily, my birthday is in January. Mm. So I, for the past 13 years, I've been given to hospitals, especially children's hospitals and orphanages, mm. wow. every year for 13 years. Wow. That's Something nice. that I do, I don't put it out there. You wouldn't know if I don't tell you. Unless you go on the internet and go deep, deep, deep. Mm. You see maybe like two or three mm. articles. But this is something that I do. Mm. I feel like giving back to society or to people who need it mm. Um, mm. is very important to me. And in giving to those who deserve, when somebody puts in work, never hold. It's a Bible verse too, it's a Proverbs verse, mm. it's tattooed mm. on my arm, Proverbs 3.16. Mm. Never hold what a man is due mm. from him. Mm. Mm. Always give. When somebody puts in a work, it's a kaba. Famano. Famano. How Straight. would you say, you know, being... Um, the giver you are has affected your your career, your life in entirety? Uh, I think it's just accumulated blessings. When I'm giving, I'm not giving because I'm expecting something back. Mm. I'm giving because that's just the way I am. And I feel like God continues to bless me, not just because I'm a son, but because of things like this that I do. Right. Mm. Mm. D, right. one more question before, Harry. before Jay, Jay comes in. You, you do a lot of business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. You want the news? Show yourself. Yeah. So Sally, she I will share my momo number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell me everything. But I, I, I just wanted to ask quickly, what's what's your relationship with South Africa like? You do a lot of business in SA. Is this something that we are missing out on? Uh, um, so, well, in the beginning, I told you that I started sending my music there mm. before it even became popular in Ghana. Yeah. So the, the South African hip hop culture is bigger. Mm. See, the music that I love to make, mm. it's not the commercial stuff. The commercial deep like you guys hear was from Hunger. <laughs> <laughs> Vera was Reggie Roxton telling me, um, you gotta do a song in three so that you can be one of the commercially successful artists in Ghana. Hmm. And I said, I don't have a firm enough grasp of the tree language to make a song in tree. But I had a hip hop song with an artist that nobody had heard at the time, D Crime. Uh, and really he, Leo. Yeah. Huh. And he rapped in tree. On the song. So Reggie said, Oh, tell D Graham to write three raps for your sack. And I was like, no, Nobody can write nothing for me. Then hmm. he said, What about Pigeon? So I translated my whole Vera song from English to Pigeon. To Pigeon. And it sounded like I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> Came to Ghana. I didn't even do an outfit for the song. I just posted it on. You remember Lime Links? Yeah. Lime Links. Lime Links. MP3 Twitter. Yeah. Oh, Chale. Chale an era. And as soon as it worked, I made more money than I ever seen in my whole life. Oh. Wow. From Vera. Oh, Vera, I buy Range Rover. <laughs> oh, I do things. <laughs> this is from streams and shows. Yeah, not even streams. That time, streams. Think it was just a problem. Deal, that time yeah. we had. Hey, hey, hey! 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 Hey, hey, well, it was one day I did five shows. So you see what I'm saying? That the artists make money and it's about who Yeah, but he's talking about the highlight you, moments. You, you, you. <laughs> this is not every day. No, I didn't have five shows every, every day. day. No, this was a highlight no, moment. But, but Ask him that after the five shows of that so, day, <laughs> if he had blown all the money, how long did it take to get a big check? <laughs> no, in? but it goes a long way. Look, that, I, I don't like to... Oh, some in Brazil. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think Fami has made money. I think Joby has made Bro, money. Bro, we are not saying I they've not made money. Made you are money. not hearing us. We <laughs> agree think, with you. Yes, they've made, they've money. made Listen, money. An artist is flying. Yes, I understand that there are sometimes... <laughs> the consistency. But an artist is a good play show for Yonki. They will give one place, but they will buy a ticket for you. At least maybe the manager will maybe be ready for sort you out. No, no, we understand those games. But at the end of the day, the music business presents money to an artist a certain amount of money that the artist possibly hadn't even invested into that into that craft. Mm -hmm. mm. There's a, there's a profit, yeah. Yeah, there's a profit in there. It's, okay. a, it's a profit. Because I did here right now, if I add my whole year salary, all the money, if you catch an artist, one artist in one show. Yeah, 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 it's true. Relax, one relax, show. relax. But, 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 <laughs> but, 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 there's a lot of things that a lot of people don't factor into. Once you become a star, there are certain things, you are not sitting, you're not flying economy again. Yeah. So if you want to fly, one day I met Famiya at um, the embassy. He was, he was with his wife and his children, <laughs> taking visas for them. And I resonated with it because every year, after fly my kiddies and their mother, go Yankee, holiday. Hold on. Yeah, that money that, from, from... No, no, no. Hold oh, on. Yeah, yeah, make it land. No. <laughs> make it land. Make it land. And it's not just me. Forget about me. Sack and your wife and your kiddies. <laughs> Even if they fly, they'll be four. Business class. Two hundred and fifty thousand US dollar deal with is it uh, with Samsung? Yeah, I think it was, yeah, was, it was public. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm, I'm giving you examples no, of, I'm, of how, how much. No, so I'm saying. Wait, I'm giving so you examples. Business class. Who give from here two hundred fifty thousand? Look, we add. Look, we add. Look, we add. No, for me, he's made some good money for himself. No, I'm yeah. saying, but look at the value. Four thousand yeah. five hundred dollars times four. Eighteen k dollar. Multiply my thirteen cities. Yeah, but there's but there's no point in there's no point in family <laughs> flying no, no, all the family on business class. <laughs> so he make a business class and make it's the fine. kids the economy. I mean, it's fine. It's it's no. understandable. Ghana, we I mean, not go The fight will happen for the house. They ask I talk this matter <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not going with them. They are going on their own. I said all of you are going economy. They say they no go go. Wow. No, no, because yeah, because D Black has made money. And they've seen the life. No, yes, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> have you seen? Have <laughs> you, you, you know? In all this conversation, right? Have you realized that? 
D Black is an artist that had been there from the beginning, yeah, from the start, yeah, till today. Yeah, look at that, the names he mentioned. Charlie, why you some seven top like of the man from Adam time? <laughs> no, <laughs> some from the beginning. Been it's, it's, been it's, been it's, it's been around, it's been around for a while. 13 years, it's been 13 years. Oh, it's 13 years. You made it sound like you, yeah, it's even longer. It's even shorter, it's even shorter than you have been. You make it sound like you, see me sound with stuff. It's even shorter than he has been in. It's been longer. I came to meet him, he's been there from the beginning. And by the way, how is it? I turned 40. 46. This oh, yeah. Yeah. No, Jay is turning 40 in July. 46, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, is it 40? I'm 36. Age? No, 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 I mean, I'm comfortable. Me, I always say I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm fine. I, 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 don't, I don't have problems. I'm, God has I'm trying to find out where you, what, what, what you're driving out with that. I feel money. that reinvestment of cash into back into the business for a Ghanaian artist sometimes is where the conversation, the, the problem, I, I because. Yes, the lifestyle demands it, but I've rolled with artists, and 90% of your life, a lot of they come free. I'm telling you, mm. let me help you out. Mm. Let me see if I can help you out. Help me out because we have like a minute. D Black said, and I have a question for him after that. Hey, like I can't catch you. Actually, no, we, no have problem. Ten we don't answer this. We have 10 minutes. Don't worry. We have 10 minutes. Problem with it. <laughs> I have given us time. Are you <laughs> hey, boss? Yeah, talk. Yeah, so <laughs> shit. So, our time is up, though. If you want to cut out, you can cut out. What I'm saying is that, like D Black said, Brand is the next elevation right. from being a talent success. Whether it's a reality mm -hmm. show, actor, musician, the next thing is build a brand. If your brand is not solid and doesn't have enough frameworks that need investment, when you get your 250k dollar, there's no machine to plug 180,000 into for it to keep working. And because you are an artist, you didn't expect 250,000. Listen. Because you're a music artist, because you're a mu music artist, your factors yeah. of production are very limited to the same thing. It's that you go to a studio, yes. your producer cook beat, you yeah. do the song, you do promotion, a fa, mm. fa, and fa. Five things you have to do as an artist. Out of the he doesn't money. need 250K yeah. to do these five. So there comes the challenge where now what he needs to do to get his next hit, he thinks that's not a cost, mm -hmm. right? Mm. But he has life to deal with. Yeah. Holidays. Rent or make we buy a house or mortgage, the car no shall not find again, hospital, things to do. And if you had 10 CDs, add, add the you, fact that your, your family feels that you blue. <laughs> yes, everybody feels that you blue. Everybody feels that you blue. Bro, even, price, even things like hospitals, bro, even things like hospitals, See, even things, bro, let me, let me, let me, hear me out, even things like hospitals, when you out. get money, mm. the hospital you they go, you they change. Changes. Even that is a luxury brand. Somebody will tell you that they go to this hospital, and they see only four people Cereal, a day. You are an artist. People too, they go queue for me. See, no, 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 no. You're no, an artist. <laughs> I'm telling you that. The kind of money, let me speak to the camera, the kind of money that Charlie, artists they Which make. one they worry you? <laughs> eh? The kind of money... Let me can tell you, if the time Kidi come here, for example, mm. me and Kwame Jin come mm. here, mm. I tell you, say, look, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Book, at that time, I was, I was working with another artist who was in, in com competition. And I know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if they combine all the songs with they, they, all the, the shows, shows they, play, they, they play over, over 10, 15 shows. Mm. I mean, I'm, I, I can't, I'm telling you from what you I know can. What, you know what we are assuming. Now, mm. now, percentage they go label and all that, fine. Mm -hmm. But once upon a time, you are not you are not earning ten thousand cities a weekend. Once upon a time now, you are you are clocking fifty k. Even if it's fifty k, you haven't seen Ghana money before. Yes, you didn't expect it. I'm coming. You didn't, you're not expecting that money. It has come. If I give you twenty five k, you will live on. If I give you fifty, you will live on. If I no. give you hundred, you will live on. No, G. I'm telling you that. Listen, maybe one of, of the few. He, you see how he's reinvested and expanded entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship. Yes, yeah, a lot that's of what them I said. have that's, access that's what, that's what to money. We're assuming that. Every artist has business acumen. Acumen, yeah. Great. Not, not, there's some artists that just want to create music, finish. That's all. They don't understand the finances. That's why sometimes you see artists complain that my manager cheated me. And <laughs> the artists who just want to create music or who can just create music, unless and, someone manages to perform, and, and that's it. But we don't have managers who are actually learned. People who go online to study, who <clears> understand <throat> how music has moved. From the CD era to the digital era, there's so many artist managers now that, that don't understand what royalty collection is and what publishing is, mm -hmm. and how to mm -hmm. collect your money from this society, mm. and, and what meeting, what proposals to draft up to say, okay, my artist is buzzing, he has this record, so let's take proposals to do collaborations with this brand, techno, or this brand, da 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 da. I don't know how to do it. Your manager For is lack your of boy. Knowledge, my people perish. Yeah, yeah. Your, man, your manager is your boy that you trust because you and him came up together. 
Yeah. And now you put a role, you need somebody to do da 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 da, da. But how many people are proper artist managers, managers. who understand? Even you guys on this panel here have more music knowledge than a lot of artist managers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then at the end of the day, when you find somebody who actually has the knowledge, does he have your best interest at heart? Mm. We know right. we have your money. So. Mm. Right. Our industry is not set up properly. So you can't blame artists for not being able to ring. When the money, when the $250,000 come, the money should not go into the artist's account in the first place. Mm. It should go into the label account or the company account. Mm. And it should be split accordingly. With some of these splits going towards the next project or investing back in the artist. Mm -hmm. When it's not done, then who's going to pay that money? The artist or the label? Who would it come to? Or the road manager? Just, just, just a quick one. Um, you've been very vocal about the rankings of, I, the, uh, of yeah. the Ghana music, um, the... The Nigerian music and Apple charts. The last time you posted about mm -hmm. it, the second time you amplified it. From where you sit, having shared this knowledge with us, where do you think we are lacking in that conversation? Just I, a quick. I, I just feel like if it was a free service, it would have been different. I think you would have seen Ghanaian songs in there. Mm. I think Ghanaians are not really at that point where people are taking their cards out to swipe to to pay for Apple subscriptions of nine ninety nine every month. Enough for you to see the masses are listening to more. Nigerian content. And the people who do that are foreign, are more foreign and foreign than our actual locals. And not everybody has an iPhone. The rankings that we saw is Apple Music, which means this is just this device. Mm. And how many people have this device? You can't say the masses all have iPhones. Right. So if it's a service that everybody can access on their phone for free, then you get the proper rankings. But it's still sad. <laughs> <laughs> so, I did. We'll uh, come so back to this conversation. The thing is saying, you know, it you, is the it. You will come back, you see? Yeah, you see? Uh, you see what? Yeah, no, because Olele mentioned Yeah, Poncho, no. No, Olele, Olele, Olele. Yeah, Poncho, no. So, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't say Apple Music charts are the actual Ghanaian charts. Apple Music is... We looked, at it, we looked at it across. I'll send I'll share for you. Don't worry, we finish, I'll share for you. Okay. <laughs> Everywhere, even our own local ones. Agenda, <laughs> agenda. <laughs> The agenda must be agenda. 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 How, you, you, you know, say, you know say, say, I will give you the yeah, yeah, show. show. I was can't... part of a station that said we're going to play 90%. Oh, we were there. Please, please. Let's play. <laughs> <laughs> let's, 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 let's close your but show. But you, 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 you know that you know, you know in Nigeria, hey. it's actually a bill. This thing says, yeah, where from this mustache? We have something for you. Yeah. yeah, where's the mustache from? So, you look like you sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell me something. So, this day, you can't hide this day. This channel? Yeah, so, we did a say with the walk, walk around. Me, I did a more than telling my swear shit. You look older in this picture yeah, than you look yeah, now. It's, it's yeah, the mustache. And then, and then, <laughs> so uh -huh. I, I saw the black like, that day, then you went Rudy, was it Rudy or somebody? You went somebody, then you, yeah, you guys did the ball inside. Like, Rudy. Yeah. You know, and and then I just said to myself that this guy knows how to plug himself there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he did, but he he was here. It was I wanted to bring it up when we have the channel own conversation. Oh, you were doing a show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember. I remember. Charlie, I remember. it's been a good one. Uh, oh, I wanted deep. to tell you guys something. What did I forget? Yeah, what was coming up next? Nah, Real quick. Nah, I forgot. What going to roll out with Deep Black? Oh, it wasn't the invitations to the club. No, that one is on the house. Uh, yeah. Our time is up. Our time is up. Our time is up. Our time is up. All right. We'll come again. We'll, we'll come, come again. Yes. We'll come again. It's been nice having D Black in the studio. Our time is up. We have to go back here same time tomorrow, Wednesday edition of Culture Daily. Thank you, and we're out. Have a